Trini Girl Natural. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Another one of my favorite videos, which is my seasonal stash flashback. The season's changing. Let's look back at what I used last season and how it worked for me. So this time we're gonna be looking at what I used this summer. And I have a lot of products this time. I really tried and I still didn't use everything I wanted to use to get to you guys before Black Friday. But I'm still trying, so look out for more. I'll try to get as many new products in before Black Friday. But anyway, let's get to it. It's a long list, so let's get started. Product talking. I have reviews and demos up for some of them. Reviews and demos are coming for some of them. You guys know the drill. Let's go. So no particular order, just because I have a lot, like I said. So I'm just going to start with whatever I put on the end. Starting off with Honey's Handmade, I'm glad to be starting with something that I haven't used before on this channel and I don't know if you guys have seen reviews or not. I got this deep conditioning mask, Honey Hibiscus deep conditioning mask. And I got this Pear and Honey Aloe Curly Jelly. So I talked about these in my Black Friday haul and I was like, wow, these ingredients look really natural. I'm a little concerned, maybe too natural in terms of is it going to work or not. But they actually did work pretty well. So let me show you the ingredients quickly. I don't even see any BTMS in here, any settled alcohol, any kind of fatty alcohol. So I was like, eek, is this going to be one of those products that, you know, a little too handmade? Like, is it going to not have any slip and not make my hair feel soft and so on? But no, this did the thing. My hair felt great. My hair was popping and I liked it a lot. This is definitely one I would repurchase if she's doing like a big sale. I'll get back to you on my Black Friday preview and let you know her sale numbers. But if she's doing a, a good sale, I'll definitely be on it. I'm gonna do a demo and review on this one. It's coming up, so I'm not gonna go too much into it. But I really like the texture, so I wanted to see if I can show you it. So I'm even gonna take a dip. I don't usually do this in this, but I, you know. I love the scent. I love the texture. I don't know if you can see the little grains. It's like almost a little teeny weeny grainy, but it has a nice creamy light consistency. Not too watery, not too thick, and I just love it on my hair. Plus it has a nice cocoa -y scent, which I love. Cocoa, musky, perfumey scent. It's a winner, me like. And the next one is the Pear and Honey Aloe Curly Jelly. So when I bought this, I was hoping for a jelly, like, you know, like Kinky Curly or something. That's a custard, but I don't know. I don't know, when I bought this, I was hoping for like a gel, like a custard consistency. So when I saw it and saw that it was a cream, I was a little bit concerned, especially again, like I said, the ingredients look pretty simple. But it actually did do a good job of defining my curls and giving me a soft hold. It definitely didn't have a firm hold, so this is not going to give you like a week long wash and go. But if you want a wash and go for just a couple of days, or your hair isn't very kinky, you might be able to try this and get a nice wash and go. It is on the thicker side, so I wouldn't call it light. It's definitely on the thicker side, but it's not super heavy and it definitely penetrated my hair well. One caution with this is that I don't feel like it mixes well with other products, so be careful with that. If you're prone to flakes, be cautious with this product. I would just like use it over a leave-in and probably do twists with it or just do like a two-day wash and go. But don't try to like layer gels over it or be careful layering gels over it because you might get flakes. And I noticed that this kind of clearly said this is not a leave-in. <laughs> so when I saw that I was like, um, okay, okay, it's not a leave-in. So does that mean it's not moisturizing, you know? But it felt fine in terms of moisture. Yeah, again, the ingredients are really simple, like you can see. So I don't see any gelling ingredient like xanthan or anything. I mean, aloe is a gelling ingredient, but it's a very light, soft hold type gelling ingredient. So I was a little concerned, but it did give me a legit soft hold and it did define my curls. And this is also something I would consider repurchasing. This jelly I consider to be like a cream, like just any curl defining cream. It's kind of on that level. I like creams that define, I like everything that defines since I mostly do wash and goes. So it is something I'll consider, but I do have quite a few creams building up now that fit that particular bracket. So definitely purchasing this, and I like this and I would definitely consider picking it up as well. I would also give a slight caution that I have seen some people allegedly have customer service issues with her. I didn't have any issue, but just a warning, FYI caution, I'll be repurchasing some people have had customer service issues with her, so just FYI. Okay, on to the next. Fine.
finally. <laughs> Next I have this pair from Caraveda. So I really love my wash day with these two. They're both styling products. This is the Detangling Curl Defining Leave-In Conditioner. And this is the High Definition Hair Gel. In terms of products, I'll definitely be repurchasing this. This is a nice, lovely botanical gel. My hair feels nice and moisturized. Warning, it does have glycerin. So this is gonna, I'll use it in the fall and then I'm gonna put it up for the winter. But other than the glycerin, my hair is defined, the ingredients are great. Let me show you the ingredients. Great ingredients, great definition, great moisture. Definitely a winner. Definitely purchasing this every time he has a good sale. Loved it. So I also get Ayurveda from Baskin Bloom, but this is one of the other lines that I get some Ayurveda from. So yay for that. So in terms of the leave-in, this is the leave-in spritz sort of. So it does come out kind of solid, but it's definitely a very light leave-in spritz. If you need that extra weight on your curls, don't expect it to do that. It is going to do leave-in things like smooth your cuticle and define a bit, but it's not going to give you that extra elongation and plumping you might want. But I do feel like it did a great job with moisture, decent job with slip, and good job with definition. I know I like this, and I probably, it probably is in my top two spray leave-ins. I only have like two spray leave-ins anyway, the Jane Carter leave-in spray, you guys know I love, and this. I don't know how spray leave-ins fit into my life, especially a spray leave-in like this that comes out kind of solid, so it's not even a refresher spray. The Jane Carter leave-in spritz, I can use it as a refresher spray. This should sound kind of solid, so it's not even a refresher spray. You just gotta, it's a leave-in, you gotta use it pretty much like that. Or like if you're refreshing buns and stuff, but it's not gonna refresh a wash and go, you're gonna have streaks all over. So, I'm not 100% sure if I'll repurchase this yet, if I can fit it into my hair lifestyle. Great ingredients as you can see. I guess I can talk about the curls and potions next. You saw me do the last video. The owner, very sweet, recommended that I try the nut tonic. Basically, I use this nut tonic moisturizing leave-in, which can also apparently be used as a co-wash. So I decided to be exciting for you all and use this as a co-wash. Rinse it out, deep condition it, and use it as a leave-in. So that video is coming up soon. It's a really fun video. It wasn't my favorite as a co-wash, but I did like it as a leave-in. So I could see myself repurchasing it as a leave-in. As a co-wash, it did kind of cleanse my hair, but it also kind of felt like it left a little something on my hair. Which you want for a leave-in, but not really for a co-wash. Then I just used the curling jelly next. And this is another one of those light whole creams that seem to be wanting to be in my life. I would say this probably has more holes in it than the Honey's Handmade. I think last time I used it with the curling potion from the same brand, but I do feel like it mixed well and I didn't have any issue. So, after co-washing <laughs> with this, I used this deep conditioner and then I used this as a leave-in. So I love this deep conditioner. This is one that I'll definitely be repurchasing. It reminds me of the Bakura Coco Mask, but a lot more reasonably priced. Has a nice light cocoa scent, plus it made my hair really moisturized and juicy. I think for my next haul, I'm going to repurchase this and then maybe try some of her rice water and chebe stuff. I have two of these curling jellies, so I like it, but I'm not going to repurchase it right away. But I'm definitely getting one of these and we'll see what else. It's just yummy ingredients, really moisturizing stuff. And like I've been saying, I love me my cocoa. And I feel like cocoa is showing up in my life too. So cocoa is showing up in my life, cream jellies are showing up in my life. Welcome, I guess. Welcome. <laughs> so then I just used this leave-in, this as a leave-in, and I used this curling jelly on top. And I got a nice big wash and go, and I was able to rock it for a few days. So I was very happy and satisfied overall with this combo. I guess next I can talk about Moisture Love. So this is the Moisture Love Deep Indulgence Replenishing Conditioner. So as you know, I like to use these kind of conditioners as a leave-in. This one wasn't my favorite as a leave-in, but it seemed great as a conditioner. It moisturized my hair, it softened my hair, but it just didn't give me that much definition. And it was a bit kind of thick to use as a leave-in for me, for my hair. I don't recommend it as a leave-in, but I definitely recommend it as a conditioner, which is what it's supposed to be for. So if you want nice moisturized hair, definitely try this. It kind of reminds me of the Sultanicals Winter Supreme, I guess. Except the Sultanicals Winter Supreme gave me crazy elasticity as well. But in terms of like thick, creamy, moisturizing, it reminds me of that. 
So if you're curious and looking for a conditioner to try, this is a good buy as well. Next, I want to talk about Sorenzo. So as you know, I really love the owner and I wish I liked more things from the brand. But even though the deep conditioners and leave-ins don't really do it for me in terms of slip and moisture, I do like her cleansers. I have these two cleansers to show you guys. One is the hair cleansing cream, which is a co-wash, but it's a very cleansing co-wash. And I feel like it does like help define your curls just a little bit in terms of, it's not a clear, but it kind of gives you that clear vibe in terms of like definition. So this is one I'll definitely be willing to repurchase. I have a demo coming up soon to give you more information on that. And then I have the clear wash, which isn't exactly a full clear wash because again, it has her shampoo base in it. So both of these have her shampoo base. So I did email her and just make sure that it's pH balanced. So they're both pH balanced and they're both great cleansers. I wouldn't say the slip is great on either one, but as I mentioned in some of my previous videos, I don't really need slip for cleansers that much. So they both work pretty well for me. And I was able to like rake it through my hair, both of them. So it's not like it has no slip. It does start with bentonite clay, but after that is the shampoo base. It's more of a shampoo than a clay treatment. So I wouldn't use it and leave it on forever like a clay treatment. I would put it on more like a shampoo. I mean, I would put it on my strands everywhere and stuff like a clay treatment, but not let it sit. Just put it on, get it everywhere, scrub your scalp and rinse it off. It doesn't give you as much definition or weight as a official clay treatment, but it's great as a cleanser and it does add some definition to your hair. I would recommend both of these and I would repurchase both of these. So I had one more thing from her that wasn't a cleanser and you know the things that are not cleansers from her don't really work for me, they just don't have enough moisture and slip for me. The styling frosting. It does have some carbama in there which isn't my favorite but I won't even say that the carbama affected me in this. It was just kind of, it was a sitter for me. I don't see any humectants or any kind of thing that would penetrate my hair. If you have normal and high porosity, it might be great for you, but for me, it was more of a sitter. So I am using it when I do like twists, ponytails and buns and pigtails and stuff. I do, I do use it sometimes then to just smooth back my hair. So it does penetrate okay like that as a kind of daily moisturizer, but for a wash and go, it just sits on my hair. The scent and everything is okay. The texture and everything is okay. It's just a bit of a sitter and it doesn't really define my curls much either. So, didn't give me enough definition. Didn't really penetrate, moisturize. So unfortunately this one is a no for me, but the cleansers, the Sorenzo cleansers in general, I can safely recommend and I did like using. I just wanted to give a special mention to this combo, the Camille Rose Honey Hydrate Leave-In and the Mish Quenched Hydrating and Twisting Butter. It could possibly have been mostly this leave-in, but I use this on top, so I'll mention both. But if you have issues where you're doing mini twists or you're doing protective styles and your hair gets dry, definitely try this. I use this in like my braids where I just, my struggle braids where I just leave them in all week. And then I put this over it and my hair stayed moisturized all week, two weeks actually. No drying out, which I hate because then I have to like redo them. It didn't dry out, it kept moisture the whole week. So if you want moisture that's just bomb, a moisture bomb, definitely try this combo or at least try this leave-in and then try your cream over it. I do want to do a video just highlighting this because it was one of those kind of discoveries like, ooh, okay, moisture for weeks, don't mind if I do. But since we're here, I'm going to throw that out and mention this to you as well. And while we're talking about Mish, I didn't use this oil this season, but I found it that I didn't have it last time to show you guys. So it's just a light oil. I love the scent. I love that it's lighter, but still kind of does oil things. So this is it. So if you're looking for a lighter oil that kind of has all your favorite oils and gives you that little ceiling and that little shine and stuff, definitely give this a try. Plus I like the scent of it too. So let me just... has a nice... Sweet scent and it's pretty light. So, and it really kind of does oil things as you can see in terms of giving you that ceiling and that shine. I mostly mix oils for myself, but if I had to buy an oil right now, this is actually probably the first oil I've tried, to be honest. But if I had to buy an oil, it would be this one. <laughs> it was good. Now, let's start talking about she scented. I definitely had a she scented summer 
I used a lot of products from She Scented. Love them all. So let's get into it, I guess. I had this green tea and ginseng co-wash, which I loved. Love the ingredients. I love the ginseng. I love the green tea. It was light cleansing and defining. Just a complete yay. And I'll definitely be repurchasing it. And I think it's going to be up there as a new staple with the blueberry co-wash. For leave-ins, I used the She Scented Cranberry Cream Hair Cocktail, which was my first HG and I still love. Light, moisturizing, defining, lots of slip. Perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> and I used the Cocoa Cream Leave-in, which is a bit heavier than the cranberry, but still very light. Definitely very moisturizing and defining. I want to say I feel like the cranberry gave me more definition, but both gave me great definition. So both of these I would repurchase. They both have glycerin, so they really come out to play in the spring, fall, summer months, and then take a break in the winter just due to the glycerin. And I use this peach nectar moisturizing yogurt from She Scented, which I again raved about. I just love the texture. I love how light and whipped it is. Plus it smells great and it really defined my curls and of course it moisturized my curls and had great slip. So this is one I'll definitely be repurchasing when I finally finish it because I don't use creams a lot. And I used the Curl Moist Conditioner, which I love. I feel like I just talked about it because I raved about it so hard. <laughs> These are the ingredients. Juicy curls, hydrated curls, defined curls. This is just a great deep conditioner like all of She said the deep conditioners are great. I think she said it are my favorite deep conditioners, so cannot go wrong, love, favorite deep conditioners. Other than this peach nectar moisturizing yogurt, the pomegranate and pear is like the only stuff that I've tried from her new, new new, from her new lines that came out. I love both. I want to get everything pomegranate and pear this Black Friday. I would have said I want to get this too, but I, this is going to last me at least a year, knowing how I use creams, so I won't repurchase this until probably next year but I loved it just as much as this. Both of these just made my hair so moisturized and juicy. I want the whole line. So let me show you the ingredients. And moisture, slip, hydration, definition. Moisture, slip, hydration, definition. So this is the pomegranate and pear quenching conditioner. And this is the pomegranate and pear restorative hair mask. And I love both of them. Another of my big videos from the summer was the kinky curly. So, I used the Come Clean, which you guys know I have warnings about. I like it actually mixed with the Sultanical Shea Butter, which I know is bizarre. But on its own, make sure you dilute it a lot and use a little and rinse it quick because it's very strong, very stripping. So when I repurchase this, no, I'm going to have it for a long time because of everything I just said. I don't use a lot at once, but I can use it, especially mixed with the Sultanical Shea Verdict. It just makes a nice perfect cleanser between the two of them, so I love it that way. After using the Come Clean, I use this Kinky Curly Stella Strands. So I don't hear about it a lot, but for me it does a good job in terms of moisture and hydrating and just everything you want a deep conditioner to do. It's not something I would like run to the store and get, especially to the store because it's like full price, but if somehow I saw this on sale or if I was at a drugstore and needed a deep conditioner, like I wouldn't hesitate to pick this up because it does everything I need a deep conditioner to do, especially using it after this. So I don't know why this doesn't get more props than it does, like in the natural hair community, but I do like this. Plus, again, like I mentioned with this, and with everything kinky curly, a little bit goes a long way, which is good. So I was able to use, usually I finish an 8 ounce in one go with like Sultanicals or She Scented, but this I use just half of it. So that's something else about Kinky Curly, even though it's expensive, it goes way longer than most other brands. Don't just look at the price, you get more uses out of it. Then I used the Nut Today after the deep conditioner. I've used it several times since then, so don't worry about how far down it is. I was a little surprised that it didn't seem to have as much slip as I thought it did in the, when I first used it like way back. But it did still give me decent slip and moisture. I wasn't a fan of the scent. Would I repurchase? I don't know. I'm gonna do another wash day with all of these just minus the come clean and see if I have a different review like if I like them even more with like something that isn't completely stripping to start me off. Then we have the Kinky Curly Curling Custard, the original and this is one of my favorite gels. It's moisturizing, it's defining, it does everything I need it to do. Definitely I will repurchase this. A little goes a long way, trust and believe. This is a love and a repurchase. We're pretty much done. <laughs> Yay! I just want to give a couple special mentions and I'll let you guys go. It was a wonderful, long, 
product experience, I guess. Special mentions to the products I've been using all summer that I've used before and I'm not really new, which I like to highlight in my stash videos, but they've been holding me down for the summer, so I had to mention them. The She Scented Blueberry Co-Wash, which you guys know is my staple co-wash. I've been co-washing a lot this summer and it's been doing the thing in terms of keeping my hair clean and moisturized. Then the Sotanicals Frizz with Curl Defining Leave-In. As you guys know, this is kind of sitting up there as potentially my favorite leave-in right now or at least definitely HG and I have been reaching for it a lot this summer. Thank you Ayo for bringing out this great product. <laughs> then we have the Camille Naturals Aloe with Butter Gel. I've been using this a lot also. Just if I'm using any cheap drying summer gel, this goes well under it. Helps to moisturize my hair, helps to define my curls and helps to prevent any crunch which you know I hate. So yay for Camille Rose in this. You guys also know I love her, lots of her other products, the curl maker and everything. But the summer went by really fast and I didn't really use a curl maker this summer somehow. I'm definitely can't wait to use it again and I'm going to be using it in the fall. This Baskin Bloom Brahmi hair mask, it's super moisturizing and it works really fast in terms of you just put it on five minutes later your hair is like, like if it's sat for an hour. So I've been reaching for it a lot this summer just because I've been really busy and I've been really in need of moisture and this is really moisturizing, great deep conditioner and it works really fast. I've been using these two like pretty much almost every week or every other week for the whole summer so yay for that. <laughs> yeah that's it! New this summer, new in my stash, just for you. Quickie reviews. I hope this was helpful. Let me know which of all of this you use, which of all of this you're getting this Black Friday. Let's just talk products down below. What are you looking to buy this Black Friday? What have you been using this summer? What are you going to use this fall? Talk products to me. Talk products to me down below. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>